not be the only one who's recently seen on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube that some of the most famous YouTubers, bloggers, travelers have lost their luggage in Europe without having any idea what to do. Today, I wanted to share four tips on how you can prevent having your bags lost as well as sharing your rights that you have within the European Union if your bags do happen to be either lost or delayed to your final destination so that you will be prepared and know your rights before leaving the airport. So my first tip is one that you might not want to hear and that is try to pack carry-on only. This might be a little bit heavier and having to lug your bags throughout the airport might not be as fun but it will ensure you that you have your valuables and really all your stuff with you all the time and helping you prevent and getting lost whenever you are going on to a connecting flight. My second tip is to buy a air tag or any other kind of tracker. Now I personally know that air tag works really well but there might be some other brands that you can use as well and basically what this is is you place this little tracker in your suitcase that is going through and being checked in and this will allow you to be able to follow your luggage as you're getting on flight and know exactly where it is. Now this in itself won't prevent your bags being lost but in the case that they are either lost or just delayed you can see where your luggage is at. So maybe it was already delayed before you got onto your first flight or it is in the connecting airport where you had your layover or it might be anywhere else in the world when it got onto a wrong flight. So these are just some options and having this will kind of help you figure out where your luggage is and might also help with getting it back quicker. My next step is to be on time a little bit early but not too early. So what do I mean with this? Usually your airline will have an indicated time frame of when you can arrive for checking in your bags. Now I would come anywhere between 30 to 15 minutes before this check-in time because this way you'll have time to figure out where your check-in gate is and be one of the first people in line. Now I know that you've seen maybe these crazy lines and it can be good to be a little bit early whenever they are expecting to have a high occupancy but this is definitely not needed for every flight and every destination. Just Make sure to check in advance, but I would say being a little bit before this check-in time, but not too early, uh, is actually the perfect amount of time. Otherwise, you will just be spending three to four hours just sitting around at the airport, and that is also no fun for anybody, but it will ensure you that your bags have plenty of time to get onto your flight. Coming before this time can actually cause your bags to be on the wrong flight, and coming a little bit more on the later scale can be that your bags don't make it in time because they have to go through like this whole check-in process and your bags kind of do a similar thing to you where they have multiple stops before they actually get onto your flight. So be on time, but not too early and not too late. And the fourth tip that I have for you guys is to please be aware of short layovers. I used to be this person that thought, I can run across the airport, no worries, I'll make it. But never did I think that my bags might not make it. And this is a lesson that I learned the hard way because my bags have made, not made it three or four times before and that was always on the way home so I've luckily never been in a destination without my stuff. It just always was when I was coming home that my bags didn't make it on the flight with me and the one sole reason because of this was that I had a short layover. This can happen to anyone. You can always have like a delay on your first flight where your layover gets shorter but this just reminded me that whenever I need my bags that I will have a layover of at least three to four hours because if something happens with my first flight or for some other reason my layover gets shortened, I will still have quite some time to get my bags. The minimum time that you need to have for a connection is different with every airline, but there's always a time frame that they indicate that you have to have. And whenever the short layover notification comes, be aware that your bags might not make it if something goes wrong with your first flight. So if you have the option of having a one hour layover compared to like a five to six hour layover, I would go for the five to six hour layover. Now, this is definitely not something that I would do if I was going like on a city trip or just when I was going to a destination for a short period of time because having these long layovers can eat out of your travel days which can eat out of your total amount of time that you have going to a city or a country. But if you're going for like a longer period of time, like two or three weeks, having that little bit longer of a layover and having your stuff with you is just a little bit more important. So I would always try and get your stuff uh, with you 
by having just that little bit extra time of a layover because there's no fun in running across airports and there's no fun in not having your bags when you get home either. So these were some of the tips that I had in order to prevent your bags from being lost but of course there's no magic to it. It can always happen to anybody and here are some regulations that apply whenever your bags do get lost so that you can be compensated in the right way. So I'm going to get a little political for a second but in 1999 the Montreal Convention was being held and on this convention a lot of rules and regulations when it comes to air travel were being discussed and afterwards a lot of countries took them over into their local laws and then three years later in 2002 the European law was adapted as well which included these rights for passengers. This convention allowed you to have 1,288 special drawing rights and what this translates to is you can have roughly 1,448 euros of compensation per passenger if your bags get lost, damaged or delayed. Now this amount is definitely the maximum amount that you are entitled to which means that it can be difficult to get this amount from the airline. This can be dependent on if your bags are actually lost, if they're just damaged or if they're being delayed because each one of those can cause you to get different amounts of compensation which makes sense for your bags being damaged. You might get the amount that your suitcase has cost you or a part of that in compensation if your bags are being delayed but they should get there on the next flight in three hours. You don't really need that much stuff right away so you won't get that high of a compensation but say your bags are lost and the next flight isn't coming in for the next three days then you would need stuff for the first three days of your trip hence why your compensation would be higher and same applies if your bags are actually lost and they don't know where they are you might need a little bit more money so that you can buy clothes for the whole duration of your trip and have everything else that you need in order to go on this trip Another thing that can be dependent on how much money you get is the destination that you're going to. If you're doing this on a winter trip, obviously you're going to get a higher compensation because sweaters, jackets, shoes are a little bit more expensive in the winter time than say if you're going on a beach vacation where you will be living out of flip-flops and bikinis. So all of these things will be taken into consideration when getting your amount, but it is always negotiable. Know that you have up to that amount that I just mentioned, 1,448 euros that you can negotiate for. Don't be afraid to put on your negotiating boots and try to get as much money as possible. Some tips on how you can approach this is whenever you notice that your bags did not make it to your final destination, you need to go to baggage claim. This is important that you do this before you leave the airport because then there's no way of the agency knowing whether or not you actually got your bags. So whenever you're waiting for your bag to show up at one of the uh, conveyor belts and they don't, go to one of the baggage claim areas that is in the same area where you're standing and tell them that your bags didn't make it on the flight. They will then ask you to fill in a PIR, which is a property irregularity form. And there you can indicate whether your bags were being damaged, if they did show up or if they are lost or if they are delayed. Now, sometimes you definitely don't know which one of the two it is. Are they lost or are they just delayed? So just go over it with the agent that is at the baggage claim area and tell them what happened or where you think your bags are. If you have the air tag that I mentioned, you can check this and they may know more because of this. So then there's two ways that the airport can continue and that is to either give you a certain amount of cash that they think is appropriate for the time that your bags are being lost or they can ask you to keep a receipt of everything that you purchase and they will reimburse you later. Now definitely be cautious with this to make sure that this is in an agreement that you know how much you can spend and how much money you will be getting back uh, because otherwise there might be some confusion later. If they decide that you have to do this and once you've done all of those things you are good to go from the airport but also make sure to write a formal letter of complaint to the airline that has lost your luggage or has your luggage delayed because this will actually help in the end of getting your reimbursements back if you didn't get a cash amount at the registry. Now say that you didn't notice that your luggage was being damaged then you actually have up to seven days after you leave the airport damaged luggage to write the formal complaint and send it to your airline and for your lost luggage or your delayed luggage you have up to 21 days to send this letter. It is important that you remember these time frames because if you send your letter after that you might not be able to get compensated for the expenses that you had. 
And lastly, always stay friendly too to people that are working at these counters. I know that it can be super frustrating whenever your luggage gets lost or damaged or even delayed. It can be a pain in the butt and it just really isn't nice. But these people that are working at this registry cannot really help the situation either. Something must have gone wrong in the duration of your flight and for some reason your bags didn't make it on time. If you stay friendly and ask them to inform you if there's any updates about your luggage, you will be able to get helped a lot quicker and a lot nicer and maybe your compensation will even be a little bit higher than if you were to be rude to this person. Now I hope you guys never have to go through this process but if you do I hope you save this video so that you can know what to do in the future and exactly how much you can be compensated for. Remember to negotiate well and I hope you guys found this video helpful. I will see you in the next one and make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more about how you can start saving, preparing and planning for your next adventure. I will see you next time.